call this meeting of the UAC to order. We'll start with roll call. On my left. Walt Vogel present. Barry present. Foster present. Keller present. And I think I can speak for Commissioner Eglash. And Eglash ah. present. You needn't speak for Commissioner Eglash. Oral communications uh, on any subject not on the agenda. I have not received any cards. Anyone received any cards? Um, then let's move on to approval of the minutes for the meeting held on September 7th, 2011. Before we uh, uh, entertain a motion on that subject, I do want to note uh, that Jeff Hoyle, who is uh, with us in the audience tonight, has submitted to the UAC comments on the minutes, um, noting that there, uh, in some cases, are statements ba made by members of the UAC or others that are not literally transcribed uh, in the minutes, and uh, Mr. Hoyle, I want to thank you for your uh, contribution on that. Um, the UAC, in consultation with uh, CPAU staff at some point in the last couple of years, I don't remember exactly when, made a decision not to go with verbatim minutes. There are pluses and minuses to verbatim minutes versus not, um, and so we are not going with verbatim minutes. Of course, if we see a situation where the minutes, where there is a substantive difference uh, in what the minutes are, the draft minutes are, versus what was said, then we will correct it. Um, if it's more of a simple wording issue, we probably won't. Uh, on that note, are there any comments or proposed edits? Yeah, I just have one. There's a typo on page five. Um, the fifth to bottom paragraph, uh, there's a section quoting Commissioner Keller, and just in the second sentence, it says he also mentioned it should be she also mentioned. Very good. Any other comments or proposed edits? Can, can you, sorry, can you um, show me the site one more time? Oh, okay, that's okay. I take it back. Any other comments or proposed edits? Was that a yes? Yes. Mr. Cullen? I'm on page four, at the bot second or third from the bottom line, or bottom, third line from the bottom. Um, what I meant to say was, but greater exposure to EMFs, not less. Uh, that's a confusing statement, and I know I was confused in the way I stated it, but what I meant to say is that there are values there are benefits which were listed, and but there's also um, issues that aren't benefits, such as greater exposures to electric and magnetic fields. Are you saying that you were pointing out the improved reliability, but that's traded off against greater exposure to EMFs? Is that your point? Yeah, one way to reward it is just to say um, improved reliability, but greater exposure to EMFs. Or if we want to spell out what EMF means for those not up on the lingo, electric and magnetic fields. Director Fong, is that, got that? Okay. Any other comments or proposed edits? If not, motion to, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to approve with uh, Commissioner Keller's edit? I'm, I, okay, okay, second. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the minutes are approved. Next up, uh, agenda review and revisions, any uh, changes? Commissioner Eglash. I observe we're no longer putting times on the agenda. Have we just totally given up on that, or is this just uh, this month only? You got well, a special agenda. Uh, no, you'll note that some items, starting on item, I believe, seven. Um, we my, are my, my bad. I, <laughs> I left my official copy of the agenda at home, so I printed it out online. I guess the but, online versions don't have times. But, but I will note on an amusing point, um, we are supposed to cover the first six items in 15 minutes, which is 10 minutes longer than we had last month when we were supposed to cover six items in five minutes. So it's a, a veritable relaxing pace this month. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so next up. Reports uh, from commissioner meetings and events. Anyone have anything? Commissioner Eglash? 
Uh, Director Fung, I was going to comment on the Finance Committee meeting that I attended unless that was going to be part of your director's report anyway. It will be, and that might be the appropriate place for you to also make comments. Then I have no comments. Commissioner Wolfogel? Yeah, I'll just make um, some brief comments about the NCPA meeting, which I attended um, a few weeks back in September. Um, I, Val redistributed some comments. I have a copy that I can put in, you know, I, I can put in for the minutes if we, if we need to do that. Um, but just in, in, in summary, NCPA did a great job bringing in a roster of, of speakers. Uh, they brought in the chairman of, of FERC, who had, I think, a very upbeat view about um, what's going on with renewable energy and transmission. Um, and then they brought in a, a series of speakers who I think presented just a slightly more nuanced view that there are, you know, as we start to scale up, uh, scale up utilities, deal with uh, intermittent supply, um, forecasting, load management, you know, dispatch, it's turning out to be a little bit harder than, um, than at least the, the, the generating and transmission operators had anticipated. Um, so I think they're really learning as, as they go along. Um, and just the, the, the takeaway that I, that, that I did want to um, present from that is it sounds like there, there is some risk at the state level. I mean, there's, I think at the state level there's some uh, renewed understanding that uh, the 33 percent RPS will cost money. And there may be some, you know, I, I got the sense from some of the speakers that, that some people in Sacramento are thinking about um, what happens if we don't get there by 2020 or what the final cost will be. So I just think it's something we should be tracking, we should be aware of. It doesn't change anything we do in the near term, but um, I just I think it's something we should be aware of. Excellent. Thank you for that input. Any other comments or reports? Okay, next up is Director of Utilities Report. Thank you very much, Chair Foster. I think you've all heard, um, but I do want to also take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Steve Jobs. And I think for all of us, we realize it's a huge loss, loss for the community, and I'm saying both the local community and, and truly the global community. I didn't know if anyone else wanted to make any remarks. I'm sure we all feel the same. Um, on, uh, so, so here's my um, report on more utilities related matters. Marketing and efficiency program updates. Demonstration garden, the new Lucy Stern demonstration garden, which is located next to the Girl Scout house, has been completed. Um, it demonstrates environmentally friendly landscaping and it uses bay friendly landscaping principles, which is a holistic approach that works in harmony with the San Francisco Bay watershed. The garden began as a collaborative partnership between the city of Palo Alto's employee green team and two, um, uh, sorry, and the local nonprofit Actera. Two workshops, 50 people attended a September 8 workshop on creating a habitat garden for bees, butterflies, and birds. And there was a parent child hands-on activity garden planting workshop to assist with the Lucy Stern demonstration garden on September 24th. This was a first for us. It was a collaborative training by utilities and zero waste staff as well as Ectera volunteers. Our Keep Your Cool and Hospitality programs are now underway. These programs will provide installation directions and rebates for efficient equipment at commercial kitchens and hotels throughout Palo Alto. And I don't know if you've had an opportunity to meet her, but our own Andrea Hart was nominated as an American Public Power Association future public power leader. Her photo, which is actually on the cover of the magazine, and a brief article about her are a part of the September edition of the Public Power magazine. Andrea is an account representative working with residential customers on energy conservation issues and the Palo Alto Green program in our utility marketing services group. Finance Committee actions. On September 20th, the Finance Committee took actions on two issues that were previously reviewed by all of you. Um, Steve Eglash articulated your recommendations at that meeting. Uh, the two issues were gas purchasing strategy rate objective and the Calaveras reserves. And I will ask um, if Commissioner Eglash wants to uh, give a brief description of those discussions. Sure, I'm happy to. Uh, first of all, uh, attending the Finance Committee meeting was really a pleasure. and. It, it feels like it's part of the democratic process and part of us 
doing our job as utilities commissioners. It's a chance to participate in and contribute to the deliberation by the Finance Committee. I'm sure attending a City Council meeting when they're taking up topics that we've previously discussed here at the UAC would be similarly rewarding. And I encourage all of my fellow commissioners to do it from time to time. On the subject of Calaveras, the Finance Committee substantially agreed with our recommendation, making only minor changes to our language. There was extensive discussion on a number of points. If the 2015 and 2020 dates were perhaps too early, ultimately the 2015 date was changed to be a goal in the final Finance Committee motion. Um, there was a discussion of whether projects outside of the electric utility should be considered, how we can make sure that the money is spent on projects that have a greater value than simply providing a refund to current rate payers, and so on. So it was a good discussion, but ultimately they uh, adopted our recommendation with only minor changes. On the subject of gas laddering and the frequency of gas rate adjustments, the Finance Committee largely agreed with utilities staff, not with the Commission, and voted to eliminate laddering and adopt market-based monthly adjusted rates. Personally, I did not find this surprising. The charts that staff has shared with us previously and that they shared with the Finance Committee really don't provide any clear evidence or support for the benefits of laddering. And my sense of our discussion was that even the UAC was fairly close to being willing to drop laddering. So although I faithfully supported the UAC position, um, uh, I did not, um, I, I did, I did not present, uh, I, I didn't tell the Finance Committee that I thought they were making a horrible choice or a choice that was seriously contrary to the data, although I did make it clear that it was contrary to our recommendation. Um, the, the benefits of annual rate adjustments as opposed to monthly rate adjustments were, were also unclear to the Finance Committee, especially since gas bills vary seasonally anyway. So, so the point that uh, even if rates were constant for a year, a user's gas bill still varies substantially uh, was a point that uh, had a huge impact, I think, on the deliberations of the Finance Committee. And of course, annual rate adjustments carry the concomitant burden of larger reserves. So there is that downside to annual rate adjustments. There was an extensive discussion of purchasing and pricing strategy. There was questions regarding protection for low and fixed income rate payers and Finance Committee was assured that such plans are in place. And there was the desire for a reserve fund to cushion against catastrophic changes in prices, although everyone realized that, that that's reasonably unrealistic. If the changes in prices are truly catastrophic, you can't hope to have a big enough reserve to completely insulate rate payers from those, but there was some discussion of that. Both items will now go before Council, and neither one is on the consent calendar. Um, my guess is that Council will support the Calaveras motion. Um, in the case of the gas motion from finance, uh, the one qualification I've I'd add is that the one person on Council today who was around when laddering was implemented in the first place is Larry Klein. And Larry, Council Member Klein, is not on the Finance Committee. So it'll be interesting when laddering is discussed at Council to see whether Council Member Klein chooses to bring forward some of the institutional memory of why laddering was put in place uh, in the first place. Um, remember that both of these items are, are directive to utility staff, but they're not prescriptive. What I mean by that is direction is now provided to staff, or will be after Council rules on it, to develop detailed policy. And then the policy will come back before us and the Finance Committee and City Council again. So this was all about providing direction, but not the detailed policy, and we'll see these again. There was one unexpected issue that arose at the end that staff's working on. Right now, Palo Alto's high rating comes in part from having large cash reserves. If we spend down Calaveras, and if we don't need such a large gas reserve, then we'll have smaller reserves. It would be an interesting unintended consequence if that caused us to have a lower credit rating. So staff's taking a look at how that might 
play out. Uh, and finally, the Finance Committee was really complimentary of the UAC's work on multiple occasions. Commissioner Iglesh, thank you for your report. I have two questions, one for you and one for Director Fong on that. Uh, Commissioner Iglesh, was the vote of the Finance Committee on the gas lettering issue unanimous or was it a split decision? It was unanimous. Uh, Director Fong, thank you for that. And then uh, when this goes to the City Council, I assume the UAC a recommendation will be included, notwithstanding the uh, result of the Finance Committee. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, any questions on that before we continue? Okay. Director Fong, please carry on. Recognizing we're five minutes behind the projected time, recycled water grant, uh, just so you know, we got $340,000 for a recycled um, water project. Um, and that in conjunction with an earlier grant that we got, we've actually been able to cover 55% of the planning and environmental co costs of the project to date. LED streetlights, we have half of the LED streetlights um, installed. And the, this set has gone up along El Camino, uh, sorry, along Alma, and there will be more installed along El Camino Real, and you might recall that some of that was funded by uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act grant monies. Western Geo, this is a um, geothermal project that we brought to you. You all um, agreed uh, with the recommendation that we um, move forward in um, indicating an interest in um, um, committing to this Western Geo geothermal project through the Northern California Power Agency. However, this project has run into some problems, and it's particularly around financing. Um, and so some of the parameters around the project are changing. Um, the project's going to be smaller. NCPA is probably going to do a steam arrangement um, instead of uh, take, taking direct output. Um, we probably will have an impact to our renewable portfolio standard level in 2015. We were projecting with this project of, uh, we were projecting getting to 30.8 percent. We'll probably only get to 28.1 percent. But we'll keep you posted. There are still a lot of uncertainties around this project. Um, we recently issued on September 27th a renewable energy RFP for new long-term contracts for renewable energy projects. This would help us meet our RPS goal. We're also trying to test the market to find out what the current renewable market prices are. Demand response, we had a um, demand response pilot, you may recall. We had three large electric customers participating, but because the weather was so mild all summer, we actually didn't have a reason to trigger a demand response event. So we simply asked for volunteers among the three customers who of you, if any, are willing to participate uh, in a mock event. We had one customer participating. Um, they did reduce their energy usage. Uh, it was great that we had all three participating customers, and we learned a little bit from this um, one one-time mock event. Um, I think the customer saved something like $170 or something. So we're, we're learning more from it. Oh, 170 kilowatts. Sorry about that. Okay. And Jane says it was a good result. Uh, lastly, we are embarking on the El Camino Park Emergency Water Supply Project. The park is closed now. Uh, thank you for all your support in getting us to this point. The contractor is setting up um, before beginning construction. There's going to be a groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, you will all get invitations. It's going to take place on October 17th at 1 p.m. at El Camino Park. Um, so that concludes my report. Thank you. Commissioner Milton. Uh, when you issue invitations, would you be so kind as to issue invitations to former UAC commissioners who were involved in helping move this project around, along going back 10 years? We will um, do every effort to do that if we have their contact information. And it is a great suggestion. Thank you.